Welcome everybody, glad you can join us today. <clears throat> Today's presentation is on dominating earning season. Now, uh, any of you who, who may know me, you know I'm not, I'm not uh, a big proponent of holding a, a security through earnings season, but this is a little different. I'm gonna actually go over three different strategies you can use that uh, have uh, been working quite well. Um, and it's kind of timely actually, our earnings season, the next earnings season, officially kicks off in uh, about two and a half to three weeks, so th this is uh, pretty timely. Now, for those of you who haven't seen us before, um, a bit about us here at Trading Wins. We are a group of pro traders with well over 30 years of experience. We're real traders and teachers, and we've been developing our own strategies and trading systems and teaching people from complete beginners to experts uh, around the globe. Now, in today's presentation, I'm going to show you the way we uh, like to trade uh, around earnings season. And as I mentioned, three different strategies. Number one will be a strategy that allows you to um, use implied volatility to your advantage, which is it's normally uh, your enemy during earnings season. I'll explain why. This is a strategy that you put on ahead of earnings. So right now would be about the perfect time to start implementing this. <clears throat> and then strategy number two, is a way you can actually put the, the odds in your favor. Uh, it's a, 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 an option strategy that allows you to normally give yourself a 10 to 1 reward to risk setup. And this strategy you can put on the day before, even the day of the earnings announcement. And then one of my favorite is a strategy you can put on after uh, the earnings release, uh, usually the next day. And <clears throat> this one allows you to take advantage of that explosive move or follow through that tend to ha tends to happen after that gap on earnings. So we will go through that uh, as, as, uh, in as much detail as we can with the time we have together and then of course we will try to answer as many of your questions as possible. Please remember that trading can be extremely risky if you don't know what you're doing so please educate yourself first and do not trade with real money until you are completely comfortable uh, with with what you're trading. So let's get get started here, and let's have a look at strategy number one, which is uh, how how we can put uh, implied volatility or use implied volatility to our advantage. Let me bring up my charting platform here. This is my Thinkorswim platform, and this is a chart of Goldman Sachs. Now the line you see here in blue is the twenty period simple moving average. You can ignore that. You don't really even need uh, any indicators for for this, um, but that's just a, a plain layout that, that I prefer to use. <clears throat> now, the thing with earnings, where most people go wrong with, with earnings announcements and trying to trade earnings announcements is that they tend to place their trade and, and they'll typically buy a call or a put or a series of them um, on the day before or on the day of, uh, so I, for example, if earnings are to be released after market, just before close, they will jump in and buy their bunch of calls or puts, or even put on a, uh, a straddle, uh, where they're buying both, to try to take advantage of the big gap that tends to happen after earnings. Now, the, the real thing with earnings is that no matter how much we try to predict which way the gap is going to go, it's virtually impossible. Um, we've seen many times where a company has exceeded expectations, uh, beat revenue solidly, but you know their guidance going forward isn't, isn't the greatest, so the stock actually ends up gapping down and, and so on. Um, so there's no real way to predict it, um, but what we can do is look ahead at the earnings date, and if you use Thinkorswim, uh, they have actually a feature where you can plot the um, corporate announcements here. So these little red boxes are the earnings announcements. And you can see there's one coming up here on Goldman Sachs right around the 15th of October. Okay, so it's a nice feature to have, but uh, if you don't use Thinkorswim uh, or don't have a platform that highlights that for you, an easy resource is actually a, uh, a, a website uh, known as earningswhispers.com, okay? Now, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm just showing you this is a great tool um, to use up here 
uh, on the taskbar, there's a section called calendar, and you can bring that up and quickly identify um, the earnings reports that are that are due out by the date. Okay, so uh, earningswhispers.com. And the reason why it's important, what you want to do is go out two and a half to three weeks um, ahead. So you want to find an earnings announcement that's approximately about three weeks from now. Uh, it could even be a month or so. But the real key here is that you want to give yourself to, to um, get into a trade ahead of time and then be out of earnings. And I'll explain quickly why. When it comes to earnings, the thing that kills most people is what we call a volatility crush, an implied volatility crush. So if we look at Goldman Sachs, okay, let's go to the option chain. Now, TOS has a, a, a neat feature here where if you collapse the option chains on the right-hand side here are the implied volatility numbers. And what you will notice for most securities is that uh, all the months pretty much uh, are, are in a very similar range. So for Goldman Sachs, it's about the high high 20s, low 30s percent. So that's an average implied volatility number for them. So when you see a month such as this, uh, the current expiration, which happens tomorrow, which is at 53%, okay, that's that's uh, uh, you know out of the norm. That's uh, a very high implied volatility number compared to the average for that stock. Now, this is really due to that Fed announcement out, out uh, later this afternoon, or very shortly, actually, within the hour. <clears throat> um, and that's why you're seeing a higher volatility number there. But what you will see for earnings, in anticipation of earnings, is usually the expiration that happens just after that earnings announcement, okay, the Friday following that earnings announcement, you will see an implied volatility number like this start to increase as we get closer and closer to that earnings announcement. And it's not uncommon to see this actually hit 100 or even higher than 100%. Okay, so uh, what will happen then, and most people will, will place that buy of calls or puts that just before earnings when this number is at 100 or, or higher. And then as soon as the earnings announcement is released, the following morning when the stock opens, the implied volatility will, will fall back in line with the average. So if, if this was at 100% and the average was 30, let's say, for easy math, okay, that means that as soon as the earnings announcement is released and this goes back, in, back from 100 to 30, you've immediately lost 70% of the value of your option contract. So even if it gaps in your favor, it's very difficult to make money that way. That's what we call a volatility crush, okay? So the way we try to get around that is to try to play that increase in implied volatility ahead of earnings. So in other words, Goldman is releasing on the, uh, the 15th of October, okay? So in a few days, you'll, you'll start seeing that expiration. You'll start seeing the implied volatility start to increase. So what you want to do is, is Mark those dates in your journal. Identify the, the key stocks you want to trade uh, in anticipation of earnings. Mark those, tra those earnings dates. And then about three weeks before, have a look at the chart to see if you have a valid uh, uh, formation for a trade. So, you know, here at Trading Wins, we use our favorite trade setup, our winning momentum strategy, etc. Some of you may be familiar with those. But right now, if we were to get a signal here to go short on Goldman Sachs, um, that would be a great time to do so because not only would our option contracts increase in value if the stock moved in our favor, but that spike in implied volatility, that increase from that 30 level up to that 100 level is going to give us an even bigger boost uh, to the premium of those contracts and make us even more money. And of course with this, what we'd want to do is make sure we are out of this trade before the earnings announcement is re released to avoid that uh, crush in implied volatility, okay? So uh, first off, what you want to do is mark these dates on your calendar, identify those earnings dates, and then you want to check your, your charting formation, make sure you have a valid uh, formation, long or short, and take that trade uh, to take advantage of that coming spike in implied volatility and make sure you are out ahead 
of time. Okay, now of course you can use many different strategies with this and I'll touch on, on more of them later on, but you can buy a call or a put, you can sell a credit spread. Uh, there are a number of strategies you can use um, with this and again I'll touch uh, more on that uh, a little later, but, but the key here again is to buy at least three weeks before take advantage of that implied volatility spread. And think of it this way for you option traders. Even if you're wrong, okay, if this set up short, but the stock started going against us and moved slightly against us here, that spike in implied volatility in anticipation of the earnings is, is going to, um, uh, it, it's going to compensate for most of that, that loss we would otherwise see, okay, because the premium uh, for those contracts is going to become greater and greater as that implied volatility increases, okay? So not only is it a great way to leverage your profits, it's actually a great way to limit your loss, okay? It's actually a very safe strategy as long as you are out before uh, that earnings announcement, okay? So let's have a look at uh, an, our second strategy here, and that is uh, strategy number two, our 10 to 1 reward to risk trade setup and the way we do this is actually with butterfly spreads okay <clears throat> I'll show you this in a moment but there's a, a, a key thing here first of all and, and this you can put on the day before or the day of earnings just before that earnings announcement is released because with this strategy what you are trying to do is take advantage of that gap. Now, the, the thing here is that you're going to try to play both sides and anticipate anticipate um, that move one way or the other. So there's a couple things you can do with this. Okay? First of all, an easy thing to do is to look back at previous earnings announcements okay, and try to um, uh, have a look at how, how much the stock moved uh, from the close of the day before earnings to after that, that earnings release. Typically, there'll, there'll be a, a range. Uh, so for JP Morgan, for example, it's like three to five dollar range uh, that it'll move from before the earnings announcement to afterwards, okay? Um, so you can look at that, look, look at the past four and see if there's any, any uh, common theme there, which there usually is. And you're going to use that, or you could use that, as your, your target. So in other words, if we're currently, uh, right now we're at 64.57, let's call it $65 for easy math, or 64 even. Let's call it 64. And so if, if we're expecting about a $5 move either way, then we'd be targeting, targeting one level uh, here at the 69 mark, and the other one here, at 59, okay? So giving us a $5 range um, either way, okay? And that could be a good place to put our butterfly spreads, and I'll show you how in just a second. But the other thing you can do is try to identify very significant levels of support and resistance uh, because what tends to happen is once the stock gaps, Okay, into that expiration, which happens the Friday of that week, the stock tends to move towards a, an area of support or resistance and settles in there right along expiration. Okay, so again, one way is to look at previous announcements, see how far that gap went and mark those areas. The other is to identify support and resistance and I'll show you the way we do it, a very unique way to identify very strong areas of support and resistance. And to do that, we won't be doing that off the daily chart, we'll actually be doing that off the weekly. Now, um, any, any, you can use this um, for any other strategies you have. Uh, identifying areas of support and resistance are always key when trading and whether you are a day trader, a swing trader, or a long term trader, really doesn't matter. What, uh, what you have to do with this is whatever time frame you're used to trading with, you want to move up at least one time frame, okay? So in this case, I'm going to go from a daily to a weekly. And then I'm going to change the style of my chart from candlesticks, okay, to a line chart, okay? And the reason for this is because it makes it uh, very, very easy to um, identify uh, 
these peaks. See the points here on the chart, these turning points? That's what you want to look at. And the key here is to identify uh, areas where you get multiple, multiple uh, touches along the line here. Okay? So actually, let me thicken up that line for a second. There we go. There. So you can see here we touched it once, twice, three times. Um, and it's more of a zone. The, the touches don't have to be exactly on the line, but they're more of a zone. Okay, so you want to start at the top of your chart and you want to start moving down and identify these, these areas of support and resistance or these multiple touches. You can see there's one here, one here, a couple here. And the more touches you get along the line, uh, the stronger that area of support or resistance, okay? So right here, again, is, is, a, is another one. You can see one touch there, one there, one there, a couple more in here. This is a, a, a significant one. And, um, and then we'll do one more here, just for the sake of time. Right around here, you can see that there's touches over here, over here, back in here, over here, over here, so several, okay? So you would want to do this from top to bottom on your chart here. And then once you're done, you want to move back from the weekly to the daily, and you want to switch back to your candlesticks, okay? And you can see how well this works. So what happens when a stock approaches a, a significant level of support and resistance, a very strong level, is it will either tend to stall there and bounce around, Okay, or it'll it'll bounce off it. Okay, and if it breaks through there, then it tends to move right to the next uh, level of support and resistance. Okay, so you can see just how well it identifies these turning points. Okay, here it, it pulled back, bounced off it, tested it again, went to the next one, came back, stalled a couple of days, made an attempt through, couldn't do it, came back up here, back here, stalled, went to the next level retested it, bounced, et cetera. All the way through, you can see how well that works. So you can actually use these uh, in your normal trading just to identify uh, even target areas, okay? Uh, they're great when using option strategies like credit spreads. Uh, you want to put your, your short strike behind a couple of these areas for protection, okay? We can touch more on that a, a little later if we have time. So you can use these significant areas of support resistance in many, many different ways. But the way we want to use it for this strategy um, is to identify areas where we might want to put our butterfly spreads, okay? So here we are, the day of earnings, let's say after the close today, JP Morgan's going to announce. And normally they move 3 to $5 or so. So we're either going to use these levels here, the $5 range, or identify um, these strong areas of support and resistance. And you can see this area is very close, 68 and 69, so uh, around there. And you can take a midpoint if, if there is a strike price there. Same with here, 60 and 59, you want a 59 and a half as your mid strike. So uh, what a butterfly spread is, is a debit spread and a credit spread that overlap on the short strike. Okay, so let's go to the option chain and for for simplicity, we're going to use uh, the 69 and, and the 59 as our, our targets, okay? So you'll be using that front month, that current expiration here. And if we go to the 59 area here and we put on a butterfly spread, you can see that it's really costing us at this point, it's nothing, it's a break even. Usually it's somewhere uh, between, there it is, a penny or 10 cents. They're very, very inexpensive. That's how you get that 10 to 1 reward to risk factor, okay? Let me move to the Analyze tab here and show you what this would look like. Uh, let me see, I've got one on here. Let me remove that one. There we go. So you can see here, here are the three strikes, okay? So the debit spread portion of this is buying the 58 call selling the 59 call. The credit spread portion is selling 59, buying 60. So there's that overlap in the 59. What it creates on your chart here is this little tent, okay? Now, what you're seeing here 
on this side, right here, right around that 58 level, is your break-even point to the downside, and here's your break-even point to the upside. So we've got a $2 range in there from 58 to 60, where if on expiration the price of this stock is anywhere between 58 and 60, we are in the profit zone. This little uh, tent here, anywhere in here, is our profit area. Okay, Beyond that, anything below 58 will be a loss, and anything above 60 will be a loss. The thing is, if we look at our loss, I mean, if we paid a penny for this, okay, um, even on 10 contracts, okay, you're, you're talking about a $10, $10 loss, okay, but your potential gain here, uh, if we if it manages to close right near the mid strike of 59, you're close to $900, okay. Now, usually it's about a 10 to 1. Uh, today's uh, expiration, because of the implied volatility spike due to that um, uh, Fed meeting, it's much higher, okay? But usually you're going to see about a 10 to 1. So under normal circumstances, you'd be risking $100 here to make close to 1000 okay? Now, if you put one of these on at one level here and the other one down here, okay, now you've covered both sides. So in total, you, you'd say you're risking $200 but hoping to make close to 1000 on one side or the other. So one will expire worthless, the other one will hopefully be in profit for you. Okay, So that's the way you do it, very little risk. Uh, you'd be taking a very, very small risk for the potential of a, of a sizable uh, reward. Now, a couple things you should know on this is whenever you're placing these trades and you're opening these, you should um, Check the cost on both the call and the put side because whether you're you're buying call uh, butterfly spreads or put spreads, it really doesn't matter. I'll show you this one here, um, the 59 level. Remember, it costs us a penny. If I go to the put side and buy the butterfly, okay, you're going to see it's around the same price. Okay, so sometimes you might be a, a, see two, three cents difference, sometimes ten cents difference. So the answer here is take the cheaper one, okay? Take the cheaper one. So sometimes you'll find put, put side cheaper, sometimes you'll find the call side cheaper. Uh, it's really no difference, okay? The other thing is that you do not want to get exercised on these positions. So once that gap happens, if you're, if it actually, the price actually lands in between your, um, uh, your range here, in between the 58 and, and 60, okay? You do not want to get exercise. So before that day is up, you want to close out that position and take your profit, okay? You do not want to get exercise on it. Um, and if you have trouble closing this out as a butterfly spread, as one order like that, what you can do, an easy way out, is to split it up and sell the debit spread portion as one order and the credit spread portion as the other, okay? That way you'll get filled very quickly, uh, very easily, and you'll be out of your trade, okay? So again, a very quick, simple way to take advantage of that earnings announcement, and you're in and out of that trade, uh, usually in the, in, in the one day, okay? <clears throat> um, now, one last strategy here. I don't want to run out of time. Let's... Uh, bring this back. The last one is how to take advantage of that explosive gain or that follow through that tends to happen on those stocks that have the big gaps and have a lot of momentum behind them. Okay, So let's go back to our chart here <clears throat> and we're going to clear this off and we're going to actually for this strategy throw on a different indicator. Okay, So for this one we are going to go to our list of indicators and we're going to pull up what is known as the Keltner channels right here, Keltner channels. Add that study and I'm going to go into the default here to show you that I'm not changing anything, okay? I'm not changing, I'm, I'm using the default settings, which is usually a length of 20 and a factor of one and a half on either side, okay? All I'm going to do here, I'm going to... Um, just uh, thicken up these outer lines 
okay, and make them the the same color just so it's easy to uh, read here. There you go. So those are what we call the Keltner channels. Now, what you want to look for, here's a, a very simple, straightforward strategy. Let me bring up a, a few examples for you. <clears throat> what you want to look at is you want to let earnings announcement come and go. Okay. So tonight after the market, for example, let's say Yahoo was reporting, and regardless of the size of the gap, it really doesn't matter. The only thing you want to look for is that after that gap has happened, one way or the other, that the bar or the candle for that day okay, closes outside of either the upper counter bar uh, line or below that lower uh, counter bar. Okay, That's the only thing that matters is that it closes. So for example, if they reported after the market today, this bar here would actually be tomorrow's bar. right? So you want to let tomorrow's uh, session go by with you're not doing anything that day. You're just waiting for that bar to complete. And if this bar closes above this counter bar line here, then what you want to do the following day is look for a move just above the high of that bar. So your 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 setup is the bar uh, closing or the candle closing outside of the Keltner channel. And then your trigger for a long trade is a trade above the high of that bar, okay, or that candle. Now, the sooner, the quicker it does it, the better, okay? So I really only look at, take trades that happen within the first two bars, and I really prefer the ones that happen on the very next bar, okay? But as long as you get a trade above that high, okay, within those two bars, um, then you're off and running to the upside. The only other rule I would use here is if it traded below here first, then, you know, I, I wouldn't read that as strong momentum, so I would let that go. So Yahoo gaps on earnings. It closes above the upper Keltner line. Second day, it trades above that high. You go long here, okay, and you're staying in this trade until you get a close below that same upper Keltner channel line, okay? So in this case, uh, this little candle here, let me zoom in, it probably closed below. We could say yes. So you would have been out here, worst case scenario, this one, okay? So very simple rules. Closes outside, breaks that high, you go long, you stay in it until you get a close, not a trade, but a close below that upper line, okay? If you get an earnings announcement like here, okay, where the stock really didn't cap much and close within the, the channel, well, then you don't have a trade, okay? If you get one here like this, okay, it gapped lower big time, closed outside that channel, but it did not trade below the low within the next two bars, right? So unfortunately, it didn't work out. It was not a tradable uh earnings announcement. Let's have a look at a few more here. Walmart, same thing. On earnings here, it was already above, gapped higher, closed there, wait for a trade above the high within the first two bars, go long, your exit is on a close below that. Okay. Here, the most recent one, it gapped below that counter channel and okay, closed below there. We mark that low. Very next day, it trades below that low, which is key. It means we have strong momentum. In three quick sessions here, we're, we're nicely in profit here. And, and you hold until you get a close above. Now, you don't have to, um, uh, if you get a sizable move, you can certainly start scaling out, you know, even, even trailing a stop to lock in some profits. You don't have to let this ride all the way till it's uh, below here. If you're happy with the profit, take it. The point is, the real advantage here is that momentum. Usually when there's a gap like that and you get a move 
below that low for short trades or above that high for long trades, um, it means there's momentum going that way and that's what you want to take advantage of. Okay? So you jump all over it and you do that. The other thing you can do is sell a credit spread uh, up here in anticipation of that follow through if you, once you get that break of that high. So you, you can play it even safer. There's many ways of doing this. Let's quickly run through some more examples. I think I'm starting to run out of time here. <clears throat> Let's see. If we look at MDLZ here, yeah, same thing. So you see this one here, back in here, okay? We gapped on earnings, closed above it. We marked that high right there. We trade above it, go long, our exit on a close just below that Keltner line, okay? This earnings announcement stayed within the Keltner channels, nothing to do. This one here, it actually gapped above, closed above, closed, uh, sorry, traded uh, above that high to get us in. You can see that it traded below that uh, counter line, but it did not close there. Here's our exit right up here. That's where we, we get out the close below that Keltner line. Okay? This one here, gapped, same thing, triggered long, close here. This one more or less a break even. Again, you know, when you see a move like this, if, if you're nice in profit and want to scale out, you can certainly do that, safer play. Otherwise, you just wait for that close below. Okay? Look at a few more and then we'll take some questions. I see there's a, a, a bunch of questions. Let me just try to get in a few more examples. I want to make sure you're clear with this before I let you go. Okay? Here's TSCO, again, a gap, and it really doesn't matter whether it's a small gap, a large gap. You know, usually the larger the gap you get when, and, and if you get immediate follow through, you know, it usually means a lot of momentum. Actually, we, we usually see that with Netflix, I believe. Let me check Netflix here. Yeah, such as this one here. Now, it doesn't look like a very large move, but if we look at the, the price levels here, here was your entry, okay? right around 59 or so, and your exit was on a close below, which was here uh, in the 68 area, okay? So almost a $10 move there, pretty sizable, especially if you're trading options. Um, here's another gap, okay? Tends to follow through nicely. Um, so it, it, works, it works quite well, and what I really like is that it's very, very simple and easy to follow. You're usually out within a week, week and a half of this trade, um, and it's just very, very simple to follow. And with earnings season coming up uh, just around the corner, you're going to get plenty of these setups to play with. And remember, you don't have to just go long uh, calls or puts with these. You can sell your credit spreads. You can do debit spreads. There's a number of things uh, you can do with different option strategies. And um, uh, if we have some time, we'll touch on that. But uh, let me get back to my presentation here, just wrap things up. So, uh, I, again, I will get to as many of your questions as possible. I do see there's a, there's a number of them. Uh, before I do that, I did want to make you aware of a, a special course that we have called Crush the Market with Options, our pro class. And this is a, a, an on-demand recording that we have. And in this class, uh, I, I teach how you can create a steady weekly income using credit spread. So not just with earnings season, this has to do all year round with, uh, with our different strategies, um, but you can easily create a steady weekly income with credit spreads. I'll show you how. Also, those butterfly spreads I showed you for that earnings trade, you can put those on in many different situations. I go through it in the class, but the key here is to try to make about $1,000 while risking $90 or less. That's the real key. That's why I love these butterflies. Um, also, during those flat periods, those consolidating markets, uh, I'll teach you a couple of different neutral, uh, delta neutral strategies that allow you to make money whether the market is going up, down, or even remaining sideways. And more than anything, one of my favorite parts of this class is the repair strategies. You know, uh, you can't win them all, and when a trade starts going against you, it's key to have a few repair strategies in your back pocket that you can pull out and, and use on that and at least minimize your losses if, if not eliminate them. 
uh, completely. So the link for this class is tradingwinds.com forward slash crush. But before you order, let me tell you exactly what you're going to get so you know that it's right for you. <clears throat> as soon as you order, you will, within about half hour or so, receive a link with the recording of our on-demand class, our Crush the Market with Auctions class. And it's an on-demand recording. You can access it from anywhere. It's yours for life. And we've decided to throw in a second recording of the most recent class we did, which was uh, just on, on July 31st. And the reason being is the first class here was scheduled for two hours. It went almost four hours long. So this first on-demand recording is about four hours. The second one is, I think, closer to two and a half or so, uh, three hours. And the Q&A is always different. Uh, we, we get people from all different kinds of backgrounds, and the questions always lead to other topics. So a lot more content here as well for you to enjoy. In addition to that, we will throw in a 30-day membership to our pro service, which is it's really one of the best uh, parts of this. Let me tell you a bit about our pro service. Uh, our pro service is the most powerful way to get access to all of our strategies and systems. You'll get real-time trade alerts showing you the entries, the stops, the profit targets. You'll also get access to our premium nightly videos, which we send out every Sunday to Thursday. Best way to learn how we trade our various systems. And you'll also be able to join us for our weekly live market chats that we have every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. We had the most recent one this morning. It was another lively session. You get to come into our room, ask me any trading-related question you like. They're also recorded, so during those 30 days, you'll receive uh, the four separate recordings of those four sessions that happen during that month. And in addition to all that, you have access to our library of past educational sessions that are available on our site. So you get all of that here. Uh, it's a $691 value, but we really want you to see what we do here. We're quite proud of what we do at tradingwinds.com, so we're offering it to you for just $47. It's available for the first 50 people in tradingwinds.com forward slash crush, and this is everything you get here. So I know we're pressed for time. We have a few minutes left. I'm going to bring our coaching coordinator on row to help me read off some questions so we can get through as many of them as possible. Let me bring him on here, and we'll try to get through as many as we can. Ro? Vince, that was a fast-paced session. I don't think I've heard you speak that fast uh, in, in some time. Uh, Jeremy was asking, does the time of the year influence your selection of strike price and delta? That, that's what he's having the most difficulty with when he's selecting options. It, it, it really doesn't, um, but during this class we do go over Sorry, exactly. to clarify, he Sorry. means around earnings season versus not around earnings season, that being the time of the year. Uh, no, it, 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 it's, it's more based around those targets that we set. Um, on the chart than it is around deltas. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll elaborate uh, in the class on that and also talk about the deltas you should be looking for during regular periods, non-earnings periods. Um, Marzina says, what's your favorite earnings strategy? My favorite is actually the, the last one I showed you, the uh, using the Keltner channels. It's very simple to follow and you, you, do, uh, you do catch some, some very nice moves. Uh, Andre is asking if you trade the VIX. I, I do not trade the VIX. No, I do not. I, I, I uh, trading VIX options are it's actually very difficult to do. If you've ever traded it, traded it you'll know why. Um, it's a long-winded answer. I can't really go into it now, but I, I do not trade around the VIX. Uh, Mark says he just signed up for the course. Thank you, Mark. Uh, he's saying he's trading with a small portfolio. Do you only trade big uh, money stocks like Tesla, Priceline, Amazon, etc. No, we look at we look at all price levels. Generally, uh, most of the ones with options are you know at thirty dollars or more. Uh, but you don't need a large account because the options uh, contracts you'll be selecting are very inexpensive in most cases, um, uh, very cheap. So you don't need a lot of money to do this with. Robert saying on strategy number two, mm -hmm. what options expiration date on the butterfly do you look for? The Friday following the earnings announcement. Okay, so the very next expiration following that earnings announcement. It's usually within the same week. Now, now that we have weeklies on most stocks, um, it's usually that Friday following the uh, earnings announcement. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, what happens with your complimentary 30-day membership? Oh, at thanks the end? for reminding me. Uh, at the end of the 30 days, if you're enjoying the membership, you don't need to do anything. It will automatically renew at $97 a month, but if for whatever reason you'd rather not continue, just give us a call, 
and we'll put a stop to it. We always say it's the world's easiest cancellation policy. Nazir was asking, how do you feel about protective puts? Why doesn't everyone trade like this? Uh, I, I, I like protective puts. I actually uh, employ them with my, my longer term uh, strategies quite a bit. Um, generally, you're marrying that put to stock, so you, you usually need a bit more capital to do that with. Uh, but I think there is a, a section on the class that we talk a bit about that as well. The phone ringing in the background reminds me that you can always call us to place your order That's as well. That's correct. The number is one triple eight five seven four two four two six. You'll speak to a live human being, a very friendly voice. We'll be able to take your order over the phone and answer any questions. We'll put the number in the chat box uh, for you as well. Um, why don't straddles and strangles uh, work as great strategies for earnings season? Uh, again, it's due to that implied volatility crush that that happens right after that earnings release. When, when you lose uh, over 70% of uh, the value of that option contract after the announcement, and it happens on both ends, right, on your call and your put, very difficult for you to make money. You, you need a very large gap in your favor. You, you, you need a very unexpected large gap in your favor to make money with those. So it's much easier doing it this way. Uh, Mina is asking, can Vince explain what a delta neutral strategy is? Uh, a delta neutral strategy is that um, you can make money off that option strategy uh, even if the, the stock stays sideways, even if it doesn't move um, one way or the other. Uh, in other words, regardless of the amount of movement, um, you can make money with that option strategy. I, I go into it in detail in the course. Uh, Robin is asking, uh, these questions come, this question comes up often. I'm trading with a small account. I'm just trading one or two contracts. Will this course work for me? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's how most of us got started to begin with, is by trading one contract. And actually, uh, as I mentioned early on, don't trade with your money until you're completely comfortable. Okay, and that's another reason why we're giving you the 30 days to follow along with us um, and, and, and learn this stuff. Um, but you can certainly start with one contract, take very little risk, and slowly build your account. You, you'll be surprised uh, how quickly it can happen. You know, the $47 that we're asking, it's even with one contract uh, that you'll place. With one, remember that Monsanto trade? Uh, absolutely. We had all those comments with the Monsanto trade yeah. that we did just a little while ago. Absolutely. People uh, paid up for a whole year. Yeah. membership with us. You know, we're really, what we're doing is giving this away. I mean, that's why we're limited to 50 people. It's, we really want you to just, just see what we do at Trading Wins. Like I said, we're, uh, we're quite happy. So our members and, and we hope you, you join our family. Brian says, when should I start uh, considering earnings trades? Uh, right now you can, what, but of course you want to look at that date. Okay. So um, some of the main companies are going to start in early to mid-October, um, but there will be ones near the, the end of that month. So those, you're just marking those dates on your calendar and starting starting to look for trades a couple of weeks from now. Uh, remember, you want to go three to four, well, really two and a half to three weeks before that earnings announcement is the key time to be in that trade. And I think that's what the mistake that people make with trading earnings. They get very excited when they hear the news of earnings coming up next week. Right. Then they think, oh, now's a great time to place right. a trade. Right, but by then the, the implied volatility spike has already happened. Uh, Frank was saying that he was having some trouble with the order, Frank. We put our number in the chat box. Uh, if you'd like, you can put your number in the chat box and we can certainly call you back as well. We're, just, uh, we're sorry about the difficulty that you're having. We'll be able to take care of it, ter care of it for you. Kirk is asking for the Keltner Channel strategy, what strike price and what expiration? Um, uh, oh again, we'll, we do go over all that in, in, the, in the course, in the class. Um, the one thing I want to stress before uh, I, I let you go is that you, know, you can put these types of trade-ons with multiple um, option strategies, right? You're not, you don't just have to use a long call or a long put. There are several ways to do this. Um, and, and so that's why we, we structured the course the way we did. And really, it's for anyone who's interested in options that really wants to take uh, y your knowledge from where you are now to the next level very quickly. In those few hours during that class, we cover some of the key strategies and break them down so you can start using them right away. Um, you're going to find a lot of content in there. Uh, Zach, Joan, Eddie, John, 
Greg, I'm sorry I couldn't get to your questions. Vince, we'll have to wrap it up here. Okay. Tradingwinds.com slash C-R-U-S-H. Crush. crush, as in crush the market Correct. with options. Correct. And hopefully you can uh, take advantage of this special offer. $47, you get a lot of great stuff. 